Now this, my brothers and sisters, is Tifera. Tifara. 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 As you can see right here, Tifara, which is the root of Tifari in the Hebrew. As you can see, it's the H8597 word. H9597. So you can look that up. In fact, over here, we have on the hard copy, Tifara, Tiforo, Tiforo, Tiferet, Tiferet. And from the root 6286, ornament, abstract. Literal, figurative, beauty, or beautiful, bravery, comely, fear, glorious, honor, and here's the key right here, majesty, glory, honor, majesty. Now, we've been touching on this in our teaching, you understand, in linking Rastafari, in fact, right here on our, on the whiteboard, you can see linking Aras Teferi, Aras Teferi, as you can see right here, the Ras Rosh Tefari or Teferi. Now we had also linked right over here that Ras and Rosh is head, right? Now also linking Teferet from the H8597 that we just showed you to Tafari, you understand, Tafari, or Teferi, Teferi, which is actually this right here, Teferi, Teferi, you understand, so it's the H8597, now when we go to the H6286, we have Para, you understand, we have Paar, Paar, or Faar, as you can see, pa'ar, which is the P, but actually it's an F sound, fa'ar, you understand? It's much like the word right over here, fear, or fear, it's fear, fa'ar, fa'ar, and as fari, farai. So you can see how the language is, how the language is when we show showing that the languages, you remember the Tower of Babel scattered these languages. But now, in the fullness of time, revelation and prophecy, we can see how these languages all come into oneness. We can see the link in uh, Tiferet, beauty, splendor, glory. The key here is majesty. Now, majesty in relation to the ark. A very important scripture quote right here is the Psalms 7861. The Psalm 7861. So this is this is the etymology, the Hebraic etymology of Ras Teferi or Ras Tefari. Rosh Teferi. Rosh Teferet. Rosh Teferet. Now let's come again over here. Now we can see we can see a little better right here the Hebrew. Now, this, of course, is in the Strong's, the Strong's, this is, this is the Strong's, let's show you, right here, this is the Strong's Exhaustive Concordance of the Bible. Now, it's a, it's a pretty thick book right here, it's a pretty thick book, but you can also go online and look it up, but here's the root of Tafari. So one say that Tafari is not in the Hebrew, it's not Hebrew, Rastafari is not Hebrew. Now you can know that they either are lying or they just are ignorant. You know saying whether it's a lie, whether purposely they know that it's there, you know saying under the Tafara or the Tiferet form, or whether they are just ignorant of that. And here's the root. Now when we go online, let's go right here to to the um Blue letter. This is the blue letter Bible, as you can see. The blue letter Bible. You understand? And this is a uh, this is the free search that one can go to the blue letter Bible. All right. 
Now here, this is the 8597. Tifara, Tifara, Tifara. Now let's look at what some of the references are to this. And what we're showing you is live and direct. This is the live and direct. Now here is the root. You understand? Here's the root. Fara, Fara, the H6286. The H6286. Now we have beauty, splendor, glory, one. Now when breaking it down, we have beauty, finery, finery of garments, glory. Now under glory, notice this under glory. Glory, one, is of rank or renown as Rastafari is of rank and renown. Secondly, according to the Hebrew, it is as an attribute, as an attribute of God, as an attribute of God. Now, C is honor, honor or the nation of Israel. We, as the once lost but now found black, Israel, this is our honor or our glory in that sense as a nation. Then the D reference is in the sense of glorying or boasting of an individual. Now, the authorized version of the Bible, the translation count, gives it at a total of 51 times. 51 times. And these are some of the ways in which it has been translated in the authorized version in the Bible. We have it as glory. We have it as beauty, beautiful, honor, fear, glorious, bravery, comely, excellent. Now, um, the Jesenius lexicon, Jesenius is a lexicon, which is a very important um, link um, within our etymological studies. And now here it has uh, Tifara, often absolute, Tiferet, Tiferet. So we have both the more masculine and the feminine form, Tifara, or Tiferet and Tiferat. Tiferet, Tiferet, Tifara, Tifara, with the suffix, you know what I'm saying? Tifara, Tol, Tifara, Tif, Tif, Tifar, Tol, Tifar, Tol, according to the pointing. But the pointing is kind of dubious, and we'll touch on why that Masoretic pointing is a little bit dubious. But the basic continental roots, we can see the link with fa'ar, pa'ar, as ornament. Splendor, Ezekiel 28 and 2, Ezekiel 28 and 40, Isaiah 3 and 18, Isaiah 52 and 1. In this sense, thy splendid vessels, speaking of the vessels, Ezekiel 16 and 17, and Proverbs 28 and 12, when... The righteous exalt, there is great splendor, or tiferet. You understand? The citizens of the kingdom, they walk in splendid array. We can see this in ancient imperial Ethiopia. You understand? In that glory, we can see that biblical manifestation of that beauty of that righteous nation. Now, Secondly, we have glory in the sense of Judges 4 and 9. Now, here is the shame, the shame, Tiferet, the shame, Tiferet, right? This is the glorious name, the glorious name, Isaiah 63 and 14, also in the sense of glorying, Isaiah 10 and 12, or the object of it, what's the object of that glory? Isaiah 20 and 5, Isaiah 13 and 19. Now, this is the interesting one here. Now, poetically, it's used of the Ark of the Covenant. Now, this is also a key link between Rastafari and Ethiopia in prophecy as the seat, what it says, of divine majesty as the seat of divine majesty, Psalm 68, 78, and 61. Psalm 78 and 61. So it's also used in the poetic reference to the Ark, to the Ark of the Covenant. Now, as a word phrase in the Strong Search, 
And here's the concordance result according to using the King James Bible, Strong's 8597, Tifara, Tifara, Strong's number H8597 matches with the Hebrew, um, Tifara, you understand, Tifara, which occurs 51 times in 50 verses in the Hebrew concordance of the KJV. So we have a couple of these matches right here that we just went over. Um, Exodus 28 and 2, And thou shalt make holy garments for Haron or Aaron, that brother, for glory and what? For beauty. So you see the red right there? That word right there is a Tiferet Tiferah link. Exodus um, 28 and 20, And for Aaron's sons thou shalt make coats, and thou shalt make for them girdles and bonnets, shalt thou make for them for glory and for what? Beauty. So there's that link to Tiferet Tiferah. Now, Deuteronomy 26 and 19, And to make thee high above all nations, which he hath made in praise, and in name and in what? Honor. And that thou mayest be a what? Holy people to the Lord thy God, or to Yahweh thy Eloh Elohim, as he hath spoken. Judges 4 and 9. And she said, I will surely go with thee, notwithstanding the journey that thou takest, shalt not be for thine honor. This is what Deborah, Deborah said. For the Lord Yahweh shall sell Sisera into the hand of a woman. And Deborah, Deborah arose and went with Barak to Kadesh, or Kadesh, Kadesh. Now we have First, uh, uh, first uh, Chronicles 22 and 5. And David said to Solomon, My son is young and tender, and the house that is to be built for Yahweh must be exceeding magnifical, exceeding magnifical, of fame and of glory. So the glory word, wherever that red is, when we're searching, it shows us where that key word that we're looking for is found within the Hebrew or the Masoretic. Throughout all countries, I will therefore now make preparation for it. So David prepared abundantly before his death. This is according to First Chronicles 22 and 5. Now here in 29 and 11, Thine, O Lord, is the greatness and the power and the what? Glory. Sounds like the prayer, the greatness, the power, and the glory and the victory, and the majesty for all that is in the heaven and in the earth is thine. Thine is the kingdom, O Lord, and thou art exalted as what? Head. So here's what's interesting above all. Here's what's interesting in this particular one in First. Um, uh, Chronicles 29 and 11. If you look at the Hebrew, you find right here we have the Tiferet, Tiferah, the Tiferai link. And then we also have right here where it says, And thou art exalted as what? A Rosh, as head above all. So we have both in this particular key verse, First Chronicles 29 and 11, both Ras and Tafari in his Hebraic sense. Now, as we go to 29 and 13, now therefore, our God, we thank thee and praise thy glorious name, the shame Tiferet, the shame Tiferet, the glorious of Tafari. It says, and now therefore, our God, we thank thee and praise thy Tafari name. Thy Tiferet name. Now in Second um, Chronicles three and six, it goes on. You understand, pointing out beauty in that sense of beauty 
and Esther 1 and 4. We also have excellent as excellent. In Psalm 71 and 8, it says, Let my mouth be filled with thy praise and with thy honor, with thy tafari. You understand? With thy far eye, thy pa'ar, far all the day. Psalms 78 and 61. And delivered his strength into what? Captivity and his what? Glory into the enemy's hand. Very interesting. This also, in a sense, prophetically speaks of our captivity and dispersion as a people in the revelation of Rastafari in connection with it. It says, and delivered his strength into what? Captivity and his glory into the enemy's hand. Psalm 89 and 17, for thou art the glory of their strength, the tafari of their strength, and in thy favor our horn shall be exalted. Psalm 96 and 6, honor and majesty are before him. Strength and beauty are in his sanctuary, are in his sanctuary. And as we go further, we have even the prophetic book. So this is the whole study right here when we're touching on Tiferet Tefari and the link between the two. You understand? Between Aras Tefari, etymologically, scripturally, biblically, and the link between Rosh Tiferet or Rosh Tefara, Rosh Tefara, Rosh Tiferet. Now, Here's the key verse that we was touching on before. It says, In that day shall the what? The branch. You see this word here? The branch of Yahweh be beautiful and glorious, and the fruit of the earth shall be excellent and comely for them that are escaped of Israel. For those that are escaped. The Terufan. You understand? Know of Israel. Now, when we look at that word branch, as we were doing formerly, uh, let's look at that word branch, the 67, the 6780. When we go to 6780, we find this prophetic word in 6780. I want you to take this down. Um, this is that H6780 or the Tzemach. The Tzemach. The Tzemach. You understand? Or the Tzemach. Right? The Tzemach. The semach is that sprout, that growth, that branch, that sprouting, that growth, that sprout, that growth of process, that sprout. Lewis says the shoot. That's the shoot of Messiah, of Christ in his kingly character. The shoot of uh, Mashiach from the what? Davidic tree. From that Davidic tree. And we find the roots now of that Davidic tree to be transplanted and planted within Ethiopia, Ethiopia. But this is a very important link right here. This is a very important link. And I think they even, when we expand, let's expand, uh, let's expand this meeting, meaning here, this reference here, click here for the rest of the entry. So we're going to click here where speaking of the Tzemach, the Tzemach, the sprout always, collect, Things which sprout forward. They have a little question mark because there was still some questions they had concerning it because a lot of this was produced before the revelation of Rastafari. You understand? But there's a foreshadowing of Rastafari and of Kedamawi Hala Salas. He's saying the fruit of the earth produce fruit of the earth, right? Then we have here in, um, in uh, what is it? Tzemach Yahweh. In Isaiah 4 and 2, the produce of Yahweh or Jehovah, the produce of the Holy Land consecrated to God, to Elohim, consecrated to God or Elohim. And the other, okay, the hemistic, it says, I thus explain the whole passage 
the produce of, this is uh, Jacinius here writing, the produce of God shall be glorious and excellent, and the fruit of the earth shall be beautiful and excellent for what the survivors, the survivors of Israel, i.e., the whole shall flourish more beautifully and shall be adorned with splendor of produce and fruits for the benefit of those who shall escape that slaughter. The other interpretation of this passage are, they say, unsuitable both to the context and the parallelism of words. So there's a parallelism of words, and they point out there's a context. Amongst these is the explanation of those who understand the Themach Yahweh, the branch or offspring of God, to be the Messiah, which, according to him, is prevented, they say, right, in the other hemistic, not necessarily so, that one may refer to his what? Godhead, the other to his manhood. But the Messiah is undoubtedly to be understood, they say in Jeremiah 23 and 5 and Jeremiah 33 and 15, where there is promise to David, there's a promise to David of a righteous branch or offspring in Zechariah 3 and 8 and Zechariah 6 and 12, where the Messiah is elliptically called the Temach or the branch or the offspring of God, the son of man, the king of kings of Ethiopia. You see the link here etymologically? You understand? There's an etymological link. There's a cultural link. You understand? There's a historical link when we're speaking about Ras Teferi or Rosh Tefora. Rosh Tefora. Now, before we move forward, let's look at this root right here. This is the root word. And as we studied the Amharic and the, and the Ge'ez and the link between the Amharic and the Hebrew here, here is the root of Tefarah in the Hebrew, which is the Tif'ara, the Tif'ara, the Tif'ara, right? That's the root right there. But down the root of the Tif'ara for Tefari, Tefari, is under this, the H6286 the root word etymology. Now, when we click on this, we find the Strong's H6286, the Pa'ar, the Pa'ar, the Pa'ar or the Fa'ar. Now, here is, they say, the primitive or the prime root. Now, the outline of biblical usage is to glory, beautify, adorn, to glorify, to beautify, to glorify oneself, to get glory to oneself, be glorified, to go over the bowls, right? Now, the authorized version gives this as a 40, 14. It's a 14, 14 times. This is used in the sense of glorify, in the sense of beautify, in the sense of boast, in the sense to go over the bowls, in the sense of glory, in the sense of vaunt. Now, this is also another expanded kind of study if we were having the time to go into it in detail. But these are things that one must meditate and study. You understand? Study to show thyself approved. You understand? Study to show thyself approved. Um, glory in it day and night. You know what I mean? Study in, in day and night. Um, there's nothing greater than actually Torah studies. You understand? Because then we get to really know God. We get to know what is revealed will is. Now, some of the links right here of Pa'ar, as we can see, is to glory. It's also to the bowls, you know, and we find that going throughout the scripture, you understand, going throughout the scripture, even in certain prophetical senses, as we find in the Psalms, right here in the Psalms, it says, for Yahweh taketh pleasure in his what? People. In his people, he will beautify the meek with salvation. Now we can see a prophetical connection between Kedemawi Halas Lassi or Aras Tafari and Holy Ethiopia. You understand? Isaiah 10 and 15 shall the axe boast itself against him that heweth therewith. 
good question for careless Ethiopia, or shall the sword magnify itself against him that shaketh it, as if the rod should shake itself against them that lift it up, or as if the staff should lift up itself as it were no wood. This is very interesting. This is very interesting. This is a prophetic word right here, and we can see that prophetic word being said in prophecy and spirit. Your was to the careless Ethiopian, shall the axe boast itself against him that heweth therewith, or shall the saw magnify itself against him that shaketh it, as if the rod should shake itself against them that lift it, or as if the staff should lift up itself as it were no wood. Then it goes on to the Isaiah 44 and 23. That last one was a very important one, Isaiah 10 and 15. The next is Isaiah 44 and 23, where it says, Sing, O heavens, for Yahweh hath done it. Shout, ye lower parts of the earth, break forth into singing, ye mountains, O forests, and every tree therein, for Yahweh hath redeemed Yaakov and glorified himself where? In Israel, even black Israel of holy Ethiopia, the renewed kingdom of David. Isaiah 49 and 3, And said to me, Thou art my servant, O Israel, in whom I will be glorified, in whom I will be pa'ar, to say fa'ar, to say tafara to say tiferet, that attribute of God. Now, Isaiah 55 and 5 says, Behold, thou shalt call a nation that thou knowest not, and nations that knew not thee shall run unto thee because of Yahweh, the Lord thy God, thy Elohim, and for the Holy One, the Kodesh Kedusu of Israel, for he hath what? Glorified. Glorified thee. So we have many prophetical links and a lot in Isaiah. There's uh, much to be studied from the prophetical links with Isaiah in this root word that you can find right here in this root word, pa'ar, pa'ar, to be beautiful, to be ornamented is the basic meaning to adorn, as in adorning the sanctuary. The Hithpael is to be adorned, honored as a people, being honored as a people by Jehovah, by Jah, by Yahweh, to glorify oneself as God does in bestowing favors on his people. You understand? And to boast is also can be used in that particular sense. So this is very important right here when we look at the root of Tafara, Tafari, Tiferet, and see that Hebraic, Ethiopic connection as we have been showing and proving and demonstrating in these particular teachings of the King of Kings and of his Christ. And once again, we return to the root of Tafari, right here. This is a very important study, but we felt that it was necessary to bring this front and center. You understand? To bring this front and center, because there's been a lot of speculation on this, so we said we'll bring forward the evidence, the heavy, heavy, you understand? The heavy, heavy evidence. You also know, some doubt this link between Ethiopia and biblical Israel and the Ethiopic and the Amharic and the biblical Hebrew, you understand, and the roots and the meanings. And what we find here is just further confirmation of the truth of the matter, you understand, of the truth of the matter demonstrated also, not only, but demonstrated also by these linguistic facts, this linguistic proof. So once again, as we go right here, this is our hard copy. This is in the hard copy. You can see we highlighted it right here, the 8597, Tif-Ara, and then we have the Tiferet, 
you understand, the Tiferet route. And then as we go over here, this is in this is according to our teachings on the whiteboard here, you can see how we, we sought to demonstrate this and to bring this forward front and center for the brothers and sisters and those who are interested in the true etymology, the true etymology of Ras Tefari, Ras Tefari, you understand? To the Hebrew Rosh Tefari or Rosh Tiferet, to the roots, you understand? 8597, to the root Pa'ar, you understand? Which even on another level, of um, etymology and linguistics, this right here, the pa'ar, some say pa'ar, but then the fa'ar is linked with fa'ar, fa'ar to fair, and also linked with fa'ri, fa'ri, fa'ri. So you can see this, this linguistic link within three languages, within the Hebrew, the Ethiopic, within the English, you understand, within the English, and within the Hebrew. So we have the Hebrew, the English, the, the Royal Amharic, you understand, or the Ge'ez, the Ethiopic link, all to this one word right here that is particularly linked with Ras Teferi or Ras Tefari. So please, my brothers and sisters, take this down right here. This is a very important etymological teaching when we're talking about the name or the shame Teferet. You understand the shame Teferet or the glorious, the glorious name Aras Teferi. So, my brothers and sisters, give thanks and praises. More to come, Yah willing. This is Aras Yadinos Teferi reporting. Shalom, Aras Teferi.